Welcome to the Perspective Podcast. Joe Sway here. As you guys probably already know from the Democratic Republic of Congo. I preach at times, but actually, no, this is actually one of those times where I get to share a little sermon. Not a little sermon. I get to share a sermon um, that I did over the retreat probably about two weeks ago now, I want to say. And I just feel like it's one of those things um, that pertains to us, you know, as people, young adults, or just people in this space. And as we talk about it even more, um, I hope that your heart is open just to be able to, um, you know, hear from the Lord in this. And even as I share this, I want to just start right off the bat to share and say that this applies to me. Uh, it applies to you if you're listening. It applies to all of us because this is something um, that the Lord desires for us. And what we'll be talking about today is actually sanctification, which is in, in a particular part of sanctification is what I'm hoping uh, to touch on today. So if you, you're you with me, um, turn to your Bibles. Um, whenever you're there, say you're... I guess I can't really hear you, so I'm assume that you've already turned there uh, in your Bible. So in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, the Bible says, Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you receive from us how you ought to walk to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this manner because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you in just and testified. Amen. And so... He starts off by saying, here I urge and I exhort you. So exhortation is just to strongly urge somebody to do something. So he's saying, I urge you and I strongly urge you in the Lord Jesus, right? So this is for those of us that are in Christ Jesus, right? So if you are part of the fold of God, if you've received Jesus, if you've confessed your sins and you've received Jesus in your life as Lord, as Savior and Lord, right? The Lordship of Jesus over our lives is an important thing. And I think this is where um, he takes that authority as being Lord over our lives and is able to command us towards um, sanctification. But he says, I exhort you in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more just as you receive from us how you ought to walk. So this is about how we ought to walk. To walk is not you leaving your house and walking outside. That's not what he's talking about. When the Bible refers to you walking, it's about how you live, your lifestyle, how you are, right? How you walk is how you live, how you ought to walk and to please God, right? So the the, the important thing here is about learning how to walk and how we should please God. Um, it's very important uh, for us as believers, right? Learning how to please God, those, those things that are pleasing to the Lord, because he goes on to say in verse 3, for this is the will of God. You know, you always hear people say, maybe you said it, uh, you may talk to a friend, you may go to church, and, you know, people are like, God, I just want to know what's your will for my life. You know, it's this, it's this talk about wanting to know God's will, and a lot of times we can refer that to, you know, you going to school and becoming a doctor, that's God's will for your life, or you getting this promotion, that's God's will for your life, or you marrying this spouse, that's God's will for your life, and you're in your room and you're praying and you're crying, God, I need to know what's your will for my life. And we see here First Thessalonians chapter 1, Sorry, chapter 4, verse 3, the Bible clearly writes it in simple terms. It says, this is the will of God, right? This is the will of God, your sanctification, not just sanctification, uh, which we're going to talk about here in a second, but particularly in the context of sexual immorality. So let's start, let's start off talking about sanctification. What is it? It might be one of those biblical terms that you've probably heard um, before at church or you heard someone say you're like what does that really really mean and 
Um, I love giving context, which I believe helps us to understand things a little bit further. So if we look back, uh, so the children of Israel at this point, um, towards the end of Genesis, you know, Exodus, they're in Egypt, right? And so they're in Egypt for some 400 years now, 400 plus years, you know, Egypt, where they went to found ref to find refuge. Now, after some years when Joseph had passed and the Pharaoh had passed, uh, there arose a Pharaoh who didn't know about Joseph and the things that he did. And he saw that the children of Israel were multiplying and he thought to himself, they are going to outnumber us at this rate. So, uh, yeah, let's put them in bondage, right? So uh, they were uh, in slavery to the Egyptians, right? A place where they once found refuge, they now became slaves for some 400 years. And you could only imagine, see, they were slaves. But just think about being, let's say you were 20 years old and you moved to another country and you get to live another 200 years old, right? We're just making numbers up here to help drive the point. But how many of you want to bet that after 100 years of living in another country, foreign to the country which where you came from, you're going to pick up, pick up the culture of that, of that country, whether it be the food, the dance, um, the way people talk, the way people think, the laws, like, all of those things are going to be embedded in you. How do I know this? I mean, I wasn't born uh, in America. I share this all the time. I was born in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And matter of fact, when I moved to America, I didn't even speak English, right? So I had, this is one of the things that I had to learn here. Uh, I never had a burger when I was in the Congo. I eat burgers all the time here uh, in America. Some of the laws that are here in America, I didn't have in the Congo. But now that I'm here, I observe those laws. Why? Because Wherever you are, you start taking on the environment, the culture of, of the place where you are. And let me give you another example. For example, look at, um, you know, where, where you go to, where you work, for example. They're trying to get you to embrace their culture. Like, everybody does this, right? So they spent 400 years in Egypt taking on the culture of Egypt as they were in slavery and bondage. Um, they embrace those things, their gods, their way of living, their way of doing things. They embraced all of those things. And so we see in Exodus chapter 9, verse 1, essentially that, that, that God tells um, Moses, um, you know, as he's commanding him to go back to Egypt to, let, to tell Pharaoh to let my people go, depending on which version of the Bible you're reading, it will say, let my people go so that they may worship me or that they may serve me, right? And I feel like both of those are really, really important, right? So let my people go so that they may worship me and serve me. And for those of you that grew up in the church or familiar with the Bible, you're quite familiar that Moses goes and um, the ten plagues happen and um, eventually Pharaoh's like, okay, we got to let these people go. And so they let them go and they go through the Red Sea. They're now in the wilderness and then we jump into Leviticus chapter 20. And I, th I think this is really, really important to lay a foundation for what sanctification is. Leviticus 20, verse 7 and 8, the Bible says, Consecrate yourselves. So it is the Lord speaking to Moses for the people. Consecrate yourselves, therefore, and be holy. For I am the Lord your God, and you shall keep my statutes and perform them. I am the Lord who sanctifies you. I'll read it again. Consecrate yourselves, therefore, and be holy. For I am the Lord your God, and you shall keep my statutes and perform them. I am the Lord who sanctifies you. Right. So, so the Lord takes them out of Egypt during the wilderness, and he's like, okay, these people that I took out of Egypt, they still have Egypt in them. Um, there was um, a show that that many of us probably are not familiar with. With uh, it was about the Beverly Hills hillbillies or something like that, whatever the name was, right? So these people came from another state. They were hillbillies in another state. They moved um, to California, right in Beverly Hills, and now their life has changed. But the story, the show is about how even though they're in a new environment, they still had the hillbilly in them, right? And so in this sense, they're taken out of Egypt, they're brought into the wilderness, but they still have Egypt 
in them. So God says, consecrate yourselves, therefore, and be holy, for I am the Lord your God, and you shall keep my statutes, perform them. I am the Lord who sanctifies you. So what does sanctification mean? I was looking through the internet, and a definition that I found for sanctification, right? Sanctification is being set apart, right? So he took them out of Egypt and set them apart for himself, right? How does he do that through them learning to keep his statutes, not just to keep them, but he says to perform them. It's one thing to know it. It's another thing to do it, right? So keep my statutes and perform them. I am the Lord who sanctifies you. So through the process of keeping the commandments and performing them, you see sanctification happen, right? So what what is sanctification? Um, I love this definition that says that sanctification um, is separation onto Right? So in this sense, God was separating them from Egypt, from the environment that they knew, from the gods that they started to learn, the culture. He separated them from that to himself. So sanctification is separation onto God. For us as believers, we're, we're, we're separated from the world onto God. Right? So you're, when you're sanctified, you're always going from one thing unto another. Right, so sanctif- um, sanctify from Egypt onto God. And so <clears throat> right, it's, it's, it's important. Why? Because God said they need to leave Egypt so that they may worship him, so that they may serve him. So then that, that brings up the fact that, you know, this is a sermon about worship, but worship isn't just singing songs on a Sunday morning. Obviously, those things are great. We're able to focus our eyes on the Lord and set our eyes upon him. But worship isn't just singing songs. You're a good, good father. That's who you are. And then crying. No, no, no. no. We see here that God wanted them to leave Egypt, bring them to the wilderness so that they may um, worship him, so that they may serve him. And and in that process, is sanctifying them. So worship is a lifestyle. It's how we live our lives. It's it's, it's, it's who we are. before him how do we know this well i mean we could quickly jump to uh romans chapter 12 romans chapter 12 verse 1 let me let me jump there real quick too um i think i, I thought i had it open but <clears throat> i guess i must have not put it in my notes but whenever you're there say you're i hear a couple of you guys since i hear you I'm going to believe that we're there. Cool. So he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, uh oh, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable, depending on, here's another thing, right? Depending on the version you read, it reads, which is your reasonable service or your reasonable act of worship. So it's that same language that we saw in Leviticus where we're talking about consecration. He says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present, that we, that I present my bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is our reasonable act of service, our reasonable act of worship. So Worship is sanctification, is, is something that's seen in worship as we're separated onto God, as we're presenting ourselves onto the Lord, a living sacrifice, right? Like we're, we're always walking with that knowledge of, man, I'm a living sacrifice. I got to live differently. I got to uh, live in a way that's pleasing to the Lord. This is me being a, a living sacrifice. He says, this is your reasonable reasonable service this is your reasonable act of worship unto god it's all about how you walk it's all about how how you live so with that being said so we, we kind of laid a foundation and a framework for sanctification right separation unto god and so you may be thinking to yourself okay cool thanks for the bible lessons but what does that got to do with me well it has a lot to do with us in the same way that we see moses was a deliverer for the children of Israel from where they were in Egypt as God was taking them to the wilderness, ultimately to bring them to the promised land. In the same way, Jesus is a deliverer as well, right? So Moses is what's referred to in biblical sense as an anti-type, not an antichrist, right? Get it out of your mind. Anti-type, which means similar kind, right? Moses is similar 
kind to Christ as in that Moses was a deliverer. He delivered the nation from their bondage and was bringing them to the promised land. In the same way, we um, were dead in our sins and in our trespasses. And God in his love and in his abundance of grace sent forth his son to pay the price and died the death that we had deserved because of our sin so that in him we might live um, in the newness of life, right? We might live in him so he, Jesus, is our deliverer, right? And because he is our deliverer, right, he's taken us from where we were in our sin, as what the Bible calls in darkness, where we were living in darkness, and he has brought us to somewhere else. I mentioned earlier how, um, you know, if you're working at McDonald's, McDonald's is going to try to conform you to its culture. That's just what organizations do. They try to conform you to their culture. In the same way, if you leave McDonald's and you want to go to Burger King, guess what? They're going to try to get you to conform to their culture. That's what they do, right? If you're working at IHOP, right, you're working at IHOP, you're doing the whole pancake thing and whatever, and you're about to move to Waffle House, guess what? You're going to need to learn how to fight, right? Depending on who you are, some people say you might need to take a couple more smoke breaks. Why? Because the culture is a little bit different. Not a little bit, it's a lot different. So whatever organization you are a part of, you need to learn the culture of that organization. And it happens all the time. You can't convince me otherwise. Everywhere you look... People are always trying to conform you um, to their organization the same kind of way when we were in the world, when we're in the world and in our sins, as the Bible says, we were living in darkness, right? Um, Now that we've been brought into the light, right? Let me give you some Bible references so we kind of know like where this language comes from. Colossians chapter one, verse 13 says that he being Jesus has delivered us listen to this language, from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. Depending on what version you read there again, conveyed is is translated us from darkness into the kingdom of the son of his love. Um, You go to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, it says, but you are a chosen generation, a, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So you see, at one point we were dead in our trespasses and our sins. We're in the in the kingdom of darkness. And so you could live however you wanted. You could do whatever you wanted. You could sleep with whoever you wanted. You could live as promiscuous as you wanted. You could identify yourself as much as you wanted. You could, um, you know, Hey, you're married. Cool, whatever. I still want to do whatever I want to do. You could do that as much as you wanted. But now that we've been conveyed into the kingdom of light from darkness into light, we need to embrace the culture of heaven. We need to embrace um, what the spirit is, is transforming and conforming us into right that same Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God right so it's 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 us not conforming to the old pattern when we lived in darkness and did whatever we wanted to do but instead we conform ourselves um, to the things of God so we may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God, right? So we, we out of, we're out of darkness into the light. This process is called sanctification. He's sanctifying us. We're, we're separated unto God. We were in darkness, and now we're separated unto God. And particularly, he talks about this area of sexual immorality. And it's something that 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 plagues us in the church. I say us because I'm speaking to myself. You know, I think even in sharing this message, I remember at the retreat, I was like, Lord, <laughs> you gonna have me share this? You know, because we all know that we have our areas of struggle, right? And, and for those of you that have 
heard my testimony before you knew that in this area was an area where um, I had struggled with, you know, especially in my earlier years and the, the last, I want to say maybe seven years, there's been a lot of grace and self-control, but it's always something that I'm having to lay down before the Lord. It's something I'm always having to lay down um, before the Lord or even presently in my relationship, you know, being engaged and navigating through that, and, you know, learning that this is important, right? Sanctification is what the Lord um, is calling me to. So I'm speaking to us. I'm speaking to um, every single one of us, right? Sexual immorality is different than other sins because the Bible says that, you know, most sins are outside the body, but sexual immorality, you're sinning against yourself, we're, 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 we're the temples of the Spirit of God where he comes and he resides. And, and you know, look through 1 Corinthians chapter 6 is kind of what I'm quoting right now. You know, when you go join yourself to another, it says you're, you're joining Christ to a harlot. Right? That's the imagery that's given here. So we see that sexual immorality in and of itself has a different level of of consequences because it says you're sinning against yourself and it's something that in a lot of the epistles which are books in the new testament when it's writing out sins you always see sexual immorality sexual immorality sexual immorality and the lord says that each of us need to learn how to possess our own vessel how to control our own vessel and he's bringing us through this process of sanctification I love this um, pastor. He, he oftentimes says, and you guys have probably heard me say before, we were all homeschooled in the wrong home, right? So all of our lives, we we learned from the wrong things. And now that we're in Christ, we're, we're trying to figure it out. And it feels so foreign. It feels so different. Well, yeah, because like I said, we were homeschooled in the wrong home. And he's wanting to bring transformation. He's wanting to bring change into our lives to bring change into our hearts as he's bringing us through this process of sanctification. Are you still there with me? If you're next to somebody, you know, turn to somebody and say sanctification. If you're by yourself, just say it out loud. Sanctification. We're all here. I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to you, but you get the point. You know, we're, we're, we're being engaging here. We're, we're talking to one another. So the important part here is adopting the culture of heaven um, for what purpose? And that's that's holiness, right? The, the Bible says that in Christ we're a new creation. Um, the new man is created uh, in righteousness and holiness. Our nature has been made new, right? So once you're born again, your spirit is alive, right? Um, it's 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 our soul, the the mind, uh, mind, will, and emotion. That's the thing that's being renewed. That's the thing that's being sanctified. So just because you're going through a process of sanctification doesn't mean that you're not His child. Sanctification is not salvation. What do I mean by that? I mean that you get saved and then you're thrown into sanctification. You know, in in, in this country, in many countries, um, let's just use America because that's where I'm familiar as that's where I'm living right now. You graduate high school and some people go to this thing called the university. They go to college, you know, where the, the, the fancy, quote unquote, smart people are. And they go there and they get educated and um, once they get educated, typically to four <clears throat> four year degree, they finish that. They get to graduate. They walk on stage. They're handed their diploma, and then they go into the world with that. But anyways, that's besides the point. Let me drink water. Let me drink water. Uh, you still with me? You still with me? Okay, good, good, good. Amen. Mm -hmm. Right. So they they get this diploma. They graduate, and, and it's it's something that they're able to see. Like, man, look at all the hard work that I was able to do. Well, guess what? We're also in a university. You got saved, whether you knew it or not. Let me break it down for you. Um, you got saved, and then you're thrown into university. Um, this is called sanctification. You. Um, let me tell you something. None of us graduate. 
Uh, nobody's gonna be no magna cum laude or summa cum laude. Where there's, there's 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 none of that, right? There's different areas where the Lord is, you know, separating us unto Himself, sanctifying us, um, producing holiness in us, right? So we're we're all in it. That's what I'm saying. I'm speaking to myself. I'm speaking to all of us, right? We're all in sanctification. You so turn to your neighbor right now and say, I attend Sanctification University. Um, Jesus is there. He's working in us, right? So since you're you're still with me, and and for those of you that you're like, man, this really relates to me because there are things that the Lord has been calling me to, particularly in this area of sexual morality, where you know I'm sleeping with my girlfriend or my boyfriend, or um, there was somebody that was engaged to somebody else um, or married, and, and I've had this relationship where I have these friends with benefits or. Um, you know, pornography has really gripped my heart and masturbation and all of these things are alive and present in your life right now. Don't turn off. Like I said, we're in Sanctification University. You're in a good place, right? You're in a good place. And let's see, what's, what's the Bible's like antidote for this? Like, what does the Bible say? Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 says, I say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so you do not do the things that you wish. Did you hear that? The Bible says that that the flesh and the spirit are contrary. They are not friends. Like They have real beef. You want to talk about um, wars that you hear? There might be World War Three, World War Four. that's about to happen outside. Well, guess what? There's a war. That's happening within us. It says that the spirit is against the flesh. The spirit of God is against the desires of the flesh. Isn't that always the case where the flesh want to do something and the Holy Spirit is like, "Mm -mm." that's not what we do. Why? Because we're in sanctification. You like that's that's where we are. Right, so so the, the flesh is strong. That's why it has to be crucified. Right, we gotta die to these things because if it was not an issue, then you know the Bible wouldn't write so much about it. But it does. The Bible writes about it. So so how how can we take what it says here in Galatians chapter five? His antidote to walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Okay, what is, what does that look like for us to practically walk in the spirit? And I've always I never like, you know, when you go to church and you hear someone preach and they say a bunch of big words, you're like, okay, I, I heard that. It sounded good. He gave me the Greek, but it's not very practical. How can I put this, um, make this very, very practical? Well, we go to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, verse 12 says, Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lust and do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. So walking in the spirit is this thing where the spirit of God is is leading us, right? And in those moments where we are tempted, because temptation is not a sin, right? Jesus was tempted at all points, and yet without sin. So temptation is not a sin. But when those things are present, we always got a choice, right? Because it says that where we're, 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 sin doesn't have dominion over us, sin doesn't reign over us, so don't obey it, right? And it's, it's not just you. Like I said, it's the Spirit of God that's working in the believer. That's where the, the sanctification is happening. It's from the inside out. It's not from the outside in. Sanctification is happening from the inside out as the Holy Spirit is highlighting this area. Um, as 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 that image comes before you, you know, you, you get that conviction. You get that, um, that verse that comes to your mind. You get that thing that comes to your heart that's like, no, this is not for you. This is not my design for you. And, and we learn to pray real prayers. You know, it's like, Lord, I thank you that you've made me new. You've made me a new creation. All things have passed away. All things have been made new. You know, I find myself turning to pornography or, you know, insert whatever you want in that case. But your word says that sin shall not have dominion over me. Thank you for the grace to walk in the freedom that's available in Christ. Thank you for new desires that you've placed in me. 
that in my flesh I may live pleasing unto you rather than just pleasing to myself. Um, you may say, man, that's a long prayer, but these are the type of tools that's necessary for us to walk in the spirit. It's, it's knowing the word of the Lord, right? Knowing the word, allowing the word to come and, and to do its thing and hit every crevices of our hearts. So whenever we are presented with these things, with these opportunities that the Lord is able to remind us, hey, son, hey, daughter, this is not for you. And we're able to pray these prayers like, Lord, give me strength. Lord, give me new desires. I don't know how many times I found myself praying, Lord, give me new desires, renew my mind, change my mind, right? And I hope these type of things aren't foreign to you because the Bible says that God is able to cause all grace to abound towards you. And so we're we're not we're not leaning on our own strength, our own ability. If you turn off this podcast right now and you go, and you're like, you know what, I'm gonna go fight for sanctification and I'm gonna do it. No, you're gonna fail. Sanctification university is learning how to lean into the spirit of God, learning how to go to his word and and seeing what he says about it and says, Lord. <laughs> you've called me righteous, you called me to walk righteously, to present myself to righteousness. Lord, I pray that you would work that in me. You know, it's it's seeing what the word says and praying it back to the Lord. And, and as the spirit of God is changing those things within you, when temptation comes, when those moments come, um, there's always a choice, right? You're not a slave to your desires when you are in Christ. He says, sin shall not have dominion over you because you've died to it. So no, sin doesn't, it, you're, you're not unable, <laughs> right? This is not a, I'm not, I'm not teaching you, um, I'm not teaching you self-control, neither am I talking to you about self-control. I'm telling you and teaching about leaning into the spirit of God, submitting to the spirit of God, um, walking with the spirit of God. Um, as you get in the word, you know, as you get in the word and allowing the word of God to transform you, you keep submitting. If you stumble after you listen to this podcast, go before the Lord, run to him and submit. Surrender. You know, that's where that's where you see change. That's where you see change happen because sin shall not have dominion over you. And you're like, man, where, 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 where is this? I need I need a verse for this. Like, give me something. Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 to 13, the Bible says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, right? Having reverence towards the Lord as we're working out our salvation. So right? I went to the gym today. You know, I got to move some, some, some weight around. Well, guess what? I walked out the gym. Man, I still got no six pack. Crazy. No, it's not. That's natural. Right? You don't go to the gym and you see transformation happen overnight. In the same kind of way, as we're going through Sanctification University, maybe you have an area that you're struggling with and, and you're hearing this message and it resonates in your heart and the Holy Spirit is like, okay, let's start putting these things into practice. You pray the prayer, and, and God forbid you stumble into those things. It's okay. Don't don't give up. Like the Lord, it's not that the effects is wearing off. You know, I feel like sometimes we do this thing where it's like, man, I went a week, and, and I was doing good. And then you stumble, and you're like, man, I got to restart all over again. No. <laughs> like that's that's a weird way of understanding this. Think, think gym. Think gym, right? Consistency. Think gym. It doesn't happen overnight. Think, Jim, keep being consistent. The Lord is working in you. Keep submitting. Keep surrendering. Keep repenting, right? He says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And I love this part, verse 13. I know a lot of us have Philippians 4.13, but put Philippians 2.13 on your wall, tied it up on your car, whatever. It says, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Right, Philippians says, uh, sorry, uh, First Thessalonians says that um, he's, we got. there's a certain way we ought to walk so that we can please the Lord, right? Philippians 2.13 says that it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. 
So he's called us to, to walk in a way that pleases God. But then here it tells us that it's actually God who gives you the will, which is the desire, and the to-do, which is the power, his spirit, for his good pleasure. So it's not you leaving and saying, you know what, I'm strong. The flesh, I crucify you. You're dead to me. Right? <laughs> Some people say that and then it's like, no, you, you haven't been equipped. It's God who works in you. He's working. That, that should bring comfort to somebody right now who's been striving in yours, an area in your life where you've been striving to, 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 to really um, die to, particularly when it comes to the sexual immorality. And you've been striving and you're tired. I just want to remind you, the Bible says that it's God who works in you both to will. He's going to give you the desire, right? And the to do the power for his good pleasure. And I just want to really just want to in, in, encourage you in that, that sanctification, this process um, that we're walking in. It's, it's the Lord who's working in us and transforming and producing something new. There were two more verses in, um, First Thessalonians chapter four that I didn't read, and I'll finish it. Uh, it says First Thessalonians chapter four verse seven. It says, "For God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness." Right? And then call us just to live how we lived before, particularly in this case of sexual morality, which is so important to the Lord, but in holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this, uh oh does not reject men. You're not rejecting me, right? Because I don't know if you're listening or not. But God, it says he who uh, rejects this does not reject men, but God who has also given us his Holy Spirit. Whoa. You're not rejecting us. I mean, you're not rejecting men. You're rejecting God who has also given us his Holy Spirit. Why is that important? As I've emphasized time and time again, it's the Lord who works in us. And and I'm trying to think I'm trying to think of a um, I'm trying to think of an example that would really really emphasize this point to us. Imagine you go outside your house or apartment or a building, and just go next to the building and tilt your body a certain way and just lean on it, put all your force on the building. Guess what? You're not going to be able to move it. <laughs> Right, you could, you could, you know how you do the, the trust fall and you just fall into someone's arms and they catch you, right? In the same kind of way, if you go outside and go outside your house, go outside your apartment, if you if you need to visualize what this looks like, go outside and actually do it. I want you to actually lean. You know Michael Jackson, how he was leaning in that one smooth criminal video. I want you to do that. Just lean sideways. Don't lean forward and hit your head. Right, lean sideways into um, the 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 apartment building or your house. Guess what? It's going to hold you. Guess what? It's going to keep you. And I think in the same kind of way, it says that God didn't call us to uncleanness, but in holiness, right? And he has given us, and he has given us his spirit, whom we're able to lean on in this kind of way, right? This, 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 is, this is sanctification diversity. It looks like us leaning on the Lord, to walk us out um, through in this whole process. And I'll just give some more verses just to continue to give reference. Um, the Bible says, um, unto him who is able to keep you mind, body, and spirit until the coming of Christ. It's not you keeping yourself. It says unto him who is able to keep you, right? I believe that's also in First Thessalonians. And then you jump to Jude. It says unto him who is able to keep you from stumbling. Right until the, the coming of Christ Jesus, right? It, it's 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 Him who keeps us. You you jump over to Hebrews and it says that both He, <clears throat> um, He who sanctifies and those that are being sanctified are one. Right? Like I, I, we need these reminders, these visual reminders that man, Jesus is the one that sanctifies. Me who is being sanctified, we're one. Right, and and I I hope I, f I feel I really feel like I need to share this again. Sanctification is not salvation. 
I'm not talking about salvation. I'm not talking about you doing a bunch of works so that so that God can be pleased with you. I'm not talking about you doing a bunch of things, um, doing enough good things. Okay, man, I'm never gonna have sex again. That way, God can 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 be pleased with me. That's not what we're talking about here. Salvation is a free gift. We're saved by grace through faith. It's a free gift, right? We get, uh, uh, you get salvation comes justification, right? You're justified in the sight of God, you know, as, as you receive the Lord Christ Jesus in your life as Lord and Savior. That's a free gift. And from that moment, you're enrolled into, into Sanctification University. That's what I'm talking about. So don't please don't confuse sanctification in this sense with with salvation. No, no, no. you gotta be saved first. First thing you gotta do is born again to enter into the kingdom. You can't enter into the kingdom until you're born again. Once you're born again, then hey, buddy. And here's the beautiful thing: you're not alone in this. I've learned that a lot of people hide because of shame and guilt. I don't want to be judged. I don't want others to look at me differently. I don't want um, people to think of me a certain way. You know, I'm a Christian. I should have had it together by now. I haven't had it together by now. Those are all lies from the enemy. They're all lies. I think about, um, you know, being in college, going to um, Christian school, and, and, you know, at that point, you know, I grew up in a church, and, um, you know, I believed in the Lord, and and I was just struggling, you know. I felt like my flesh a lot of times was <laughs> overcoming the spirit um, as it kind of talks about that war that's happening on the inside. And you get to college and, you know, you're having the friends with benefits. You're having, um, you know, these relationships that now I'm like, man, like how did I let myself do those things? But in the moment it feels good because, you know, <laughs> that's just what sin does. In the moment it always feels good. And those things always lead down a path. And it was a thing that I was struggling with, but I never wanted to open up with anybody about it because I didn't want to feel feel judged for it. You know, so you just keep living a life where, you know, you're, you're stumbling, falling, stumbling, falling, stumbling, falling, stumbling, falling. Um, you pray and you go back into it. And it's just like, where is this power that's supposed to change me from the inside out? And I remember one day I just... This is about two years after graduating, got on my knees, you know, the Lord was just stirring my heart and wooing me to himself. And I just like, I was like, Lord, I just, I just surrender. I, I, I don't know what to do anymore. <laughs> you know, I just, I'm, I, I was just like, I'm tired of living this way. And, and, and I really believe the Lord really saw faith in that moment. It really took me up on that offer. And it's been seven years since then, you know, uh, pornography that had me bound for so many 10 plus years, you know, I woke up the next day, those desires were gone. I feel like my, my view of women because of pornography really became distorted. Woke up the next morning, completely changed. Like for me, it was such a radical uh, transformation that happened. But even still, I had to be enrolled and I'm still currently enrolled in Sanctification University because from then, that didn't mean temptations didn't come. I just had new desires, so I was able to recognize what the temptation was, and I found the grace and self-control in those moments to say, nah, that's not pleasing to the Lord. Have I made mistakes from from that day until present today as I'm recording? Yes, yes, of course I have, but I found that there's grace in Christ Jesus to restore us through repentance. Right, Repentance is such a beautiful thing that the Lord has given us. And don't don't ever don't ever let the enemy or somebody you 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 hear listen to preach another gospel to you. The Bible says that in our weaknesses he's strong, right? When we stumble, we run to him um, because he is our Father and and he loves us. We have this high priest who the Bible says is able to sympathize with us in our weaknesses. This is an area that I found that. A lot of us as believers, this is an area of struggle for us, right? We have a high priest who's able to sympathize with us in our weaknesses. Therefore, let us run to the throne room of grace with boldness so that we may receive grace and mercy in the time of need. This is Hebrews chapter 4. So grace and mercy in our time of need is found in the Lord 
and he's a high priest who understands, sympathizes with us in our weaknesses. So I implore you, as we continue down this process of sanctification, we learn to lean on the Lord. I mean, I'm talking about everything. Throw your weight on him. Have those real vulnerable prayers with the Lord. Don't stop making, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> stop making promises that you can't keep. Like, Lord, I'm never going to watch porn again. And then you watch it tomorrow and then you're, you're defeated, you're crushed. And then the enemy brings about condemnation and shame. And stop making those promises. Instead, we keep praying, Lord, thank you for the work that you're doing in me. Thank you for sanctification. Thank you for producing holiness in me. Thank you, Lord, um, for holiness. Lord, I'm continuing to, as the Bible says, I'm continuing to present my vessel. I found myself many times uh, starting my day saying, Lord, I present my vessel to righteousness today to, to do those things that are right in your sight, to do those things that are pleasing in your sight. And I, and I notice that as my mind and my heart is set on the Lord and the things that are pleasing to him, I recognize when the temptations come and, and I'm quickly able to say, nah, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm, 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 my, my, my desires are something else, right? And so we're able to walk with the Lord in an authentic way, right? Walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. It's where we're, we're Holy Spirit, right? The spirit whom God has given us, the paraclete who is with us. The Bible says um, he's called the paraclete, which means um, one who's come alongside to help. He's here to help, right? And, and so our helper is with us and in us. And we continue just to to walk with him. We continue to submit to him. When we stumble, we, we, we go and there's repentance. I love this verse. I know I'll end it here. If the, um, if the worship team just want to come um, in the back, that was a joke. There's no worship team, but you know how to do it at churches. Um, I love this verse, and I'll end it here. Hmm. Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. You know, Peter's giving this long speech to the people there. Uh, this is the day of Pentecost, and um, they're like, you guys are drunk. Y'all drinking. Peter's like, man, it's way too early to be drinking. What you're actually seeing is the work of God, and he starts breaking down for them like, this Christ Jesus that you guys crucified in. Just go read it. It's beautiful. But I always love verse 19. I love verse 19. It says, repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out, like your sins may be removed. And so this is, you know, maybe if you find this and you're like, man, I don't, I don't know, I don't know Christ Jesus. It says repent and be con converted, right? Be born again, be transformed. Allow the Lord Christ Jesus to come and rule and rule in your life and your heart and your everything. Right? Repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Here's the second part of, of that, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. You want to be refreshed, and there's something in repentance that just you know brings us in this, in this place. So maybe it's you who, um, you know, you and your, you know, girlfriend, boyfriend, or you're you're going through it, or just you by yourself. You're going through those moments. There's repentance where we want to be vulnerable and honest with the Lord and repent. That's that's speaking it and, and, and saying it to him. And I think there's also um, man, just receiving his love in that moment. Don't don't be the person who you repent, the Lord forgives you, but out of pride, I'm going to say it again, out of pride, P-R-I-D-E, out of pride, you say, you know what, I can't forgive myself. How could I let God down in this kind of way? Whoa, calm down. You're way off the deep end, as they say. When I repent, the Lord forgives you because he's faithful to do it. First John chapter 1 says that if we confess our sins, he's faithful to forgive us our sins, right? So he's faithful to do it, so you also forgive yourself. Not that we, we just start living like, you know, I'm going to do whatever I want. No, because we died to sin, right? So that excuse doesn't work, right? So repent, receive his uh, forgiveness. We're, we're, we're forever subscribed to 
um, Sanctification University. We're forever subscribed to the work of the Spirit within us, transforming us, and, and just being authentic with our praise, like, Lord, just give me new desires, change my desires. Thank you for the work of sanctification that you're doing. Thank you that I've been separated onto you from the things of this world um, to the things of God. Um, Lord, I want to present my body onto you as a living sacrifice. This is my act of worship. Like we we take on the word and we pray to the Lord and, and there's so much grace for us where faith um, is present in our life and we lean on the spirit when he's leading us you know, those moments when he says, hey, maybe block that person. Yeah, that's probably the thing to do. Hey, maybe don't respond to that text message at whatever time in the hour. Maybe that's the thing to do. Hey, let's not try to figure out what that line is. Let's 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 not live just to figure out that line. Right? I'm saying all these things. Like I said, I'm talking to me. I'm talking to us. This is not me talking down to anybody. This is for all of us. We're all in this. And if you need somebody, find somebody to you know, be praying with you to to encourage you, to stand with you during these moments. You're better um, fighting with others than fighting on your own. Don't let shame be the thing that that keeps you in darkness and, and, and come two or three years from now, you've been so jaded to the gospel, to the grace of God that you just find yourself in a deep place because you've allowed shame and guilt and condemnation to keep you from walking in the light. And I'll just, I'll probably just end it there. You know, I think, I think um, sanctification is important for us, particularly in the area of sexual morality, but we're renewing our mind for so many things, you know, whether it was anger, the way you responded to people, um, pride or the, the way you just thought yourself so much better than others. You know, there's a lot of different areas that the Lord, yeah, maybe maybe the Lord isn't speaking to you particularly about um, sexual morality, right, as you're walking with them. Maybe for you it's anger. Maybe for you it's it's the jealousy or, or the gossip. Maybe for you it's the, 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 the aggression or just all of those things that he's wanting to just sanctify and renew and change and, um, and and take you from. And so we're in that process. Reach out to us. Uh, we love you here at The Perspective uh, Podcast. Just want to share, um, not my perspective, but, you know, the, the, the Lord's perspective, the Lord's truth, the Lord's word. Um, and I hope that was something I was able to encourage you. Um Hope you're able to take notes. You could always listen to it and share it with others if you think it'll be beneficial um, to them and for them. And like I said, man, find people to to stand with you. Reach out to us. We would love to um, engage in conversation with you. If you even want to go further in this topic, you know, we can bring you on and talk to us about it. Um, you know, we'll definitely love to just engage in conversation and continue to stand and walk in the light together. So. Yeah, that, that's that's it for us today. Make sure to, um, you know, subscribe and follow and share and all the good things. You know, we, we want to continue just to bring more um, podcasts and episodes to you all. And uh, we hope that they're beneficial as, as having these conversations are helping us. We hope that they're helping you all as well in the same manner. But um, like I said, this is Josue. I'm from the Congo. I preach at times. Next time I do this might be next year. I uh, went to Old Roberts University. You guys already know the line, but um, I love you. Let's keep walking down Sanctification University, right? Peace.